Remember at the height of the MCU, they had multiple phases. They still do, but we only talk about anything past Endgame in Phase 3. NFL's got three phases to OTAs. This is the very beginning of that. Meetings and such, no workouts till down the road. But over on CBSSports.com, our guy Cody Benjamin projects six new playoff teams for 2024. Why six, you ask? Because on average, only about half the teams return to the postseason. So there's a lot of turnover. So in this exercise, he's got Kirk Cousins and the Falcons being one of those new playoff teams. Atlanta finished seven and 10 last year. They hired a new coach to go along with a new quarterback. So rounding out this list is Cincy, Jacksonville, Seattle, Tennessee, and the Jets. Again, find it on CBSSports.com for Cody B's write up. We're going to break it down here on HQ Spotlight on set. Jacqueline D'Agostino, Lige Duzable, and Danny Cannell. So we split things up in terms of these teams. We're giving Lige AFC, Danny NFC. Lige, you're up first. So we're talking about one team in, one team out. I know which team comes in for you. <laughs> what Jets, team would that be? The Jets. No the Jets? Out, really? The so, Jets? So which team the is Jets? out? The Miami Dolphins hmm. are the divisional foe. When you look at the Miami Dolphins, DK, and you look at their offensive line, that was the question last year going into the season. Could Tua Tungavaloa stay healthy? Well, if you look at this offensive line, it's retooled. They lost their best guard in Robert Hunt in free agency. Terry, Taron Armstead, people were wondering, would this guy actually potentially retire, DK? He decides to come back. Connor Williams was their center. Haven't really replaced him. So they did bring in Aaron Brewer, who can play center and guard. But I think the offensive line is not where it used to be. And then you look at some of the guys they've actually lost. Andrew Van Ginkle, who had a major season last year. Christian Wilkins, who played Pro Bowl-type football. Deshaun Elliott, who is now with the Steelers. Too much overturn there in that defense. And then, we're not even talking about players that are on their team, but may not even be healthy to start the season, DK. When you look at their edge defenders and Jalen Phillips and Chubb on the outside, they did sign Shaq Barrett, but he, at this part of his career, is not the players that Jalen Phillips or Chubb is. So, when you look at the Miami Dolphins and then you look at the Jets, right, it all depends on can Aaron Rodgers actually stay healthy this year. They did bring in Tyron Smith and also Morgan Moses to solidify the offensive line and John Simpson got big receiver on the outside to pair with Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams. It's all about Aaron Rodgers staying healthy. We know they have a championship defense, but they added to that defense, DK. Hassan Reddick, one of the best closers in all the games. I don't think anybody saw the Jets potentially trading for this guy this late into free agency. So when you look at it on paper, again, the game is not played on paper, but there's more holes on the Miami Dolphins team right now than there is the New York Jets. I was going to crush you for being a homer on this pick. <laughs> but you picked them too, right? Yeah, I didn't pay attention to the homework assignment, so yeah. I went AFC first, and I had the Jets as one of the first yeah. teams. Getting I don't know if I would have the Dolphins out, but I can see the point you make, and I do think if Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. NFC. Mm -hmm. I, so I was kind of forced into this the other day. Full <laughs> like, know, Shocker. I, I'm going to go ahead and double down on it. I'm going to say the Chicago Bears are in. They're going to be one of those teams. Cody Benjamin also had him in there as well yep. as one of those teams to get in on this one. I think the emergence of Caleb Williams is going to be a much needed you know, position that they have lacked for, you know, 15 years. I think he's, I, I think I'm buying into the Caleb Williams hype. I'm not that concerned. I don't love some of the off the field stuff, but I think you surround him with the talent that they've got. They already had DJ Moore. We know that he's explosive. Keenan Allen. So you got two legit Man. number ones. You added DeAndre Swift to the running back position. You've got some help along the offensive line. Shane Waldron comes in as the offensive coordinator who comes from that Sean McVay tree. I trust him more than I've got with some of the other uh, you know, play callers that have been there in Chicago. So I think there's an opportunity. And not to mention, this team wasn't that bad last year. You know, so down the if it gets a little bit better at quarterback, then I think they're a playoff team. I also think there's question marks within the division. Minnesota, I don't think is going to be that good. Clearly, they're breaking another a, a, a rookie quarterback. Green Bay, can they replicate what they did last year? Jordan Love. And then Detroit really is the big question mark for me. They were the team that everybody loved. Can they keep it up, that pace? So I don't think the Bears are going to win the division. I think they'll be a wild card team. So who do they take out? I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh. A team that last year started seeing some of the cracks in the foundation. Yeah. And I think you're going to see that continue. The retirement of Kelsey, I think, is huge. Yeah. Uh, one of the best you know, like leaders on that team. The Correct. center position is the quarterback of that offensive line. I, the Nick Sirianni thing is perplexing. <laughs> I did not think it worked last year, and it felt like a lot of the faction of the players would not have minded seeing him being fired. And tough. then they stuck with him, made the court, you know, both court coordinators, you're having turnover. 
I think there's a lot going on in Philly that I think catches up with them, not to mention the losing streak they had towards the, the end of last season. I think it all becomes combustible. I think Sirianni probably doesn't survive, and I think the Eagles are kind of trying to restart from scratch in another year. Let's go back to the AFC dues because the AFC North, you know, the rivalries there are yeah. intense. And the Steelers, they get Russ, they get Justin Fields. Mm. But you're kind of betting against Mike Tomlin in, the, in this one here. Let me preface this by saying this. <laughs> Mike Tomlin doesn't have a losing record. I'm not saying they don't go 9-8. and eight. <laughs> I'm just saying they don't make the playoffs. And it's because Joe Shiesty is coming back to town. People forget... For the last three years, it was Joe Shiesty versus Patrick Mahomes. Who was going to represent, you know, the AFC in the in the Super Bowl? And for a good portion of it, DK, Joe Shiesty had his number. It wasn't until two years ago in the AFC Championship game where Mahomes was finally able to get over the hump. And then being able to get T. Higgins back on the franchise tag was big. And I look at some of their moves on defense, right? They had an experiment go wrong. They let Jesse Bates out of the door. They had Dax Hill at safety. Didn't really work. So what did they do? They rectified that. They went and got Geno Stone, and they brought an old friend back in Von Bell to be that enforcer in the secondary. So when you look at this Bengals team, who almost made the playoffs, that was one game out of the playoffs with their backup quarterback, you don't think getting Joe Shiesty back will propel them back into the playoffs? I think so. Adversely, Jacqueline, you brought up the Pittsburgh Steelers, right, and them having Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Let me go out and say this right now for everybody to hear this. I believe by week four, Justin Fields will be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. And I think it's because that quarterback position will be in such a limbo. Why, that's why the Steelers will miss the playoffs when you look at that team. I don't think Russell Wilson is the same guy he was going back to the 2012 season. You've seen him with multiple different coordinators not have success. You brought up Shane Waldron, right? We saw Geno Smith have a lot of success with Shane Waldron. When he got there, Russell Wilson didn't have a lot of success. And now with Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator, Will he be tasked to do the things that Arthur Smith wants him to do? We know Russell Wilson doesn't like to throw the ball over the middle of the field. Well, that's what Arthur Smith wants him to do, so I don't know how that marriage is going to work. Kind of like how I knew the Sean Payton marriage wouldn't work with Russell Wilson. So I just think the Steelers will be in limbo at the quarterback position. I ultimately believe Justin Fields will be the starters, but I don't believe they have enough on this team, especially after losing Deontay Johnson to via trade to win and make a run in the playoffs. I got an easy one for you from the NFC. I think this is a slam dunk home run. Uh, the Falcons are in. This was the biggest upgrade at any position across the board this free agency period. And I'm going to take Raheem Morris at his word. When he said he took that job, he said, hey, if this team had a quarterback, I wouldn't even have this opportunity Ooh. because the previous coach wouldn't have been fired. Kirk Cousins comes in. We know about the weapons on that side of the ball. I'm buying into the Falcons. I say they win the division in what has been one of the worst divisions in the yeah. NFL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that means the Bucks are the team that takes a step Ooh. back. Not a huge step back, yeah. but I still think this division only gets one team uh, yeah. back in the playoffs, and it'll be the Falcons. I have the Bucks on the outside. All right, Lige, Danny, who's in, who's out for mm -hmm. 2024? We are counting down to the season.